Hello, and welcome to my series on writing algorithms in C. So today we are going to be talking about how to traverse a tree, and specifically a binary search tree. Now, I need this to create a destructor for my tree. And the reason for this is that I use malloc to assign spaces in memory for all of the data in the tree. So I need to visit every single node of the tree to actually free that data to avoid having a memory leak when I no longer need the tree. And in order to do this, I need to ensure that I visit every single node of the tree. So today's algorithm is going to be one that will visit every single node of a tree. And you can do something different at the end of this algorithm. I'll point out where. But the algorithm essentially is just to visit every single node in a binary search tree. So I'm going to start this off visually, and we're going to walk through what needs to happen. And then I'm going to put it into code for you. So here we have an example of a binary tree. You can see that every single node has no more than two nodes or two children. And the, there is one single parent node that we're going to call the head. So the nodes each have a pointer or a memory address in them that points to the left node and the right node. And we're going to call this the previous node and the next node in our example. And so what we're going to need to do is make sure that we step to all of the previous nodes and all of the previous nodes of those nodes and all of the next nodes and all of the next nodes of next, those next nodes. So it's, a, it's an interesting algorithm, but actually the code for it is quite simple. So what we're going to do is start at the head because at the beginning of the binary search tree, that's the only one we have to, a, we, we know that we have a reference to. We have a reference to the head in the binary search tree, but every subsequent node is only referenced by the previous node. So we're going to have to walk through it one at a time. And what we're going to do is first see if the node has a previous node. So we will move down. And then we're going to use recursion. So we'll call exactly the same function to check if this node now has a previous node. And it does, so we're going to step down again. We'll use recursion again. And if this node has a previous node, we'll step down again. Then this node does not have a previous node. So we will check if it has a next node. And we will again use recursion. So now this node, we're going to check if it has a previous node. It does not. And we're going to check if it has a next node. It does not. So now we can free the node. So we will delete this node. And then that recursive layer will end and we'll come back out to this one. So we have checked if it has a previous. We have checked if it has a next. So now we are free to free that node. And then we'll end that recursive layer again. And the last thing we did in this recursive layer was check if it has a previous. So now we just check if it has a next. Indeed it does, so we come down. We check if this one has a previous or next. It does not, so we delete it. And then we finish that recursive layer, and then all that's left to do in this recursive layer is to free the node. So we free it again. That recursive layer ends, and we see that this one now has a next node, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until we delete all of the nodes one at a time. So once we get back up to the head, we're going to come all the way down to this one. And then we'll delete it. We'll then delete this one, this one, this one, this one, and then finally this one. And that is how we are going to visit every single node in the tree by checking if it has a previous, then checking if it has a next, and just walking through. And at the very end of that, you will be able to decide what to do with that node once you get there. So I'm gonna stop the recording over here, and let's switch over to the actual code and write it. So you can see that I have my binary search tree already implemented. We've done this in a previous video. And one of the member functions that I wrote as a constructor is this binary search tree destructor. And I passed it void, but in fact, I actually want to pass it the binary search tree that I want to destroy. So we're going to pass struct binary search tree, and we'll call it tree. And then let's implement that. So I want to put it in the same section as the constructor. So we'll say void 
binary search tree destructor. And before I forget, let me increase the font size so that will be a little easier to see on the screen. And we're going to pass this struct binary search tree and we're calling it tree. So what we are going to do is first call this destroy function on the head. So let's make a function prototype and we are going to call it destroy node. So this one is going to return void and we're going to call it destroy node BST because I think there's a destroy node somewhere else in my library. And we're going to pass this a node pointer. Did I spell that right? I didn't. Node pointer called node and spell it correctly. And we are actually going to be calling this function on the item. So now this destructor function is just going to call the destroy node BST. So we're just going to call it destroy node BST and we're going to pass it tree.head. So this is essentially just renaming the destroy node BST. And the reason I'm doing this is that I don't want the user to have to think about nodes at all. They just are worried about their tree and they just want to destroy their tree. So to have them pass in the head of the tree is sort of breaking the immersion, so to speak. So essentially, this is just renaming my function to something else. And we can destroy, we can name or implement destroy node BST in such a way that it deals with nodes rather than trees. So let's come down here and actually name it. Well, you see, I already have destroy node BST, so I need a different name for that. So we're going to call it recursive tree destruction. That sort of describes what it does. So let's actually implement that. And this one is instead going to call recursive tree destruction. And let's define it down here. And I want to do it in the same order that I have above. So void recursive recursive tree destructor and it's going to take struct node pointer to node and all we're going to do is check if the node has a previous and then call the same function then we'll check if the node has a next we'll call the same function and then we will free the contents of the node so we will say if node previous and I believe we can just call the node destructor. Yes, we can. So we'll say destroy node. And let me make sure. Yes, OK. But we, we're not doing that yet. Actually, if it has a previous, then we are just going to call the recursive tree destructor again. So recursive tree destructor on node previous. So we're calling exactly the same function and we'll do the same tests. So we can also say if node.next or arrow next, then we are going to call the same function on node next. And then finally, we are going to call the node destructor or actually destroy node BST and we're going to send it node. So it's a very simple algorithm. It's just the recursive nature of it makes it so that it, in fact, will visit every single node. And one of the most important parts of this is that I have two if statements rather than an if else or if else if statement, because we want to see if it has a previous first. If it does, we want to go back into the function. And if it doesn't, we still want to check if the node has a next and we want to go into the recursive layers. But if the node does have a previous, we also want to check if it has a next. So if we think we're on the head right now and let's say the head has one previous 
and three nexts. Then we want to go into this. We'll say, okay, it has a previous, so we will call the same function on that previous node. We'll come in here, we'll see that it does not have a previous, and it also does not have a next, so we will destroy the node. And then we'll exit that recursion, and we have just finished this line on the head node. So then we continue. And since I have an if, not an else if, an else, or any other sort of thing, we will still check if the head has a next. So we will say the head does indeed have a next. So we will call our recursive loop. And let's remember we are here on the head now. So we'll come in on the next, doesn't have a previous, it does have a next. That one doesn't have a previous, but it does have a next. That one does not have either. So we will destroy that node. And then we'll keep coming back out until we are back to the head. And now we have gone all the way through every layer of this tree one at a time. So we are only left with the head of the tree, at which point we can destroy that node. So that is our basic algorithm. It's recursive and it will allow us to step through every single area of the tree. And there are two different ways that you can traverse a tree. One is depth first and the other is breadth first. So depth first is what we are doing here, where you kind of go all the way down a line. Breadth first would be that you go all the way down to the bottom and you go all the way across, or you start at the top and you do everything in a single layer. And in our case, that's just not going to be possible because if we do a single layer and we free those nodes, then we've lost our reference to the other nodes in the tree. So we have to do a depth first algorithm here. So that is a basic algorithm on how to traverse a tree using recursive functions. And I just want to point out that this is the part, this destroy node BST. That's where you can do something else with this function. You can have it return something, like return the data, or you could have it manipulate that data in some way. So you wanted to add one to it. You could instead say something like node data plus equals one. And it would still do this depth first traversal of the tree, but instead of destroying it at the end, it would just do some other thing to it. It's just in my case, I needed this for a destructor. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like on the video and I will see you next time. Toodaloo.